Hello everyone, it is May 2020 and I'm standing here at the top of Horsetooth Rock at sunrise and I wanted to pick this place as a very special place for a very special event and that is the commencement of the class of 2020. When I think of sunrise and I think of May and I think of spring, I think of new beginnings and what a perfect place to recognize and celebrate your transition from college into the real world. This is the 110th year that Colorado State University is graduating a class of veterinary students. And as the Dean, I am so very proud to be part of your journey and to be part of your celebration. Our veterinary college is one of the very best in the world. And our veterinary students are also some of the very best. And it takes a great combination of students, faculty, and staff to make this such a phenomenal place. And I, I wanna recognize and thank all the faculty and staff that have been a big part of your journey and your success today. A special thanks to Dr. Melinda Fry and the DVM Services team who have helped make today such a success. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize and thank all the family members and friends that have been so supportive, not only over these four years, but for the last decades. Um, they deserve our thanks and recognition. Thank you for all that you've done. Graduates, I remember vividly just four years ago when at your coding ceremony, I was so impressed with the intellect and the passion that I knew you were gonna to bring to Colorado State and to this profession. And I can tell you that my admiration of you as individuals and as a class has only grown over these four years. And I wanna congratulate you and commend you for following your hearts and dreams. You could have picked any profession um, but I can think of none other that is as selfless and that is truly dedicated to making a positive impact in this world. Dean Stetter, Associate Dean Fry, distinguished faculty, proud family and friends, significant others, and secret lovers of the class of 2020. My beloved fellow graduates have given me the indelible honor and burden of speaking to all of you this morning. Today marks the culmination of not just four years of veterinary school, but for many, the pursuit of a lifelong dream of becoming a veterinarian, and for all, a marathon of rigorous education and training. I think my fellow graduates would agree that we have experienced a wide array of emotions in the weeks leading up to this moment, especially given the current circumstances. However, one feeling that I personally keep coming back to is a deep sense of gratitude for those who helped us reach this significant and surreal achievement. You may be familiar with the traditional African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. However, you probably haven't heard the impromptu and cheesy, or should I say, caseous proverb, it takes many villages to raise a veterinarian, which is why I would like to take some time to sincerely thank some of the distinct groups who helped my fellow graduates and me along the way. To our unsung heroes and silent villains, although I never went to a feedlot during vet school, thank you to the Cubes and First Year Lecture Hall for showing me what one feels and smells like. Furthermore, thank you to the Second Year Lecture Hall for teaching me one of the five freedoms of animal welfare, the freedom of discomfort. Thank you to Maya Cove for being a hidden oasis of $1 hot dogs and not completely terrible Caesar salads as well as to Etai's for providing a one Michelin star experience at three Michelin star prices. Thank you to Proctoring for making already stressful days and exams somehow more stressful. For the record, even prisoners of war are allowed scratch paper under the Geneva Convention. Thank you to VetPoint for being a fleeting summer romance. Although you weren't perfect, the more I look back, the more I only remember the good times. Thank you to Stringsoft for teaching me that real efficiency is filling out 12 separate forms for a necropsy or opening a new window every time I click on something. Finally, thank you to the breweries throughout Fort Collins for your unanimous, unequivocal, unwavering support throughout the highs and lows of our journey. To our distinguished faculty, thank you for your courage and wisdom. While it can be anxiety inducing to speak to large groups it is genuinely terrifying at times to lecture to 150 well-educated, driven, highly analytical vet students. 
We can be a tough crowd sometimes, which is why out of a show of support over the last four years, more and more in my class selflessly volunteered to not attend lectures in person in an attempt to ease any pressure you may feel. You're welcome. I also must commend your courage in your audacious efforts to see just how many PowerPoint slides you can cover in a 50 minute class. Despite some of you trying to fit 300 slides into two hours on a sunny Friday afternoon, we are also grateful for how magnanimous you have been with your wisdom, both in medicine and life. While we certainly do not remember everything you taught us in class or rounds, we have held on to fragments of your imparted experience, sagely advice, and self-deprecating stories to form a rough mosaic of knowledge to draw from moving forward. So though we may not be able to beatbox heart murmurs like Scanson, perform a TPLO with our eyes closed like Palmer, cure colics by whispering down a nasogastric tube like Hackett, or simply have fantastic hair like Lappin and Shropshire, we do head out into the world more capable and competent veterinarians, thanks to you. To the amazing staff, technicians, interns, and residents of the James L. Voss Veterinary Teaching Hospital, thank you for working with and teaching us. Within the bland, off-white, windowless walls of the hospital, your personalities provide a much-needed kaleidoscope of color. On the busiest days and during literally the darkest hours when we got called in at 2 a.m., you still took the time to explain to us the underlying pathophysiology of a disease or your rationale around the management of a patient. When we were a deer in headlights because a faculty asked us a question, you mount the answer to us or perform some quite remarkable interpretive dances without anyone seeing. You got excited with us every time an adorable animal came in and whenever a long-term inpatient finally went home, when the CRI pump wouldn't stop alarming at us, you took time out of your many responsibilities to aid us, and also because that alarm was getting super annoying. From Argus to Central Supply, pharmacy to animal care, and every single service in between, all of you work extremely hard to provide exceptional veterinary care and service to our community, which is why it has been such a privilege to work and learn from each of you this past year. To our family, friends, partners, and mentors, thank you for believing in us. You never wondered if we would become a veterinarian, but instead merely when, where, and how obnoxious you could be when we finally walked across the commencement ceremony stage. Over the years, you have all held a diverse number of roles along our journey, including high school science teacher, pre-vet advisor, research mentor, letter of recommendation writer, personal chef, bail bondsman, et cetera, et cetera. We are sorry we sometimes didn't return your calls or emails for days or didn't speak to you for weeks. In fact, you may not have seen us in a while or just occasionally during the holidays, only to listen to our petty grievances about parasite life cycles or rants about diseases you had never heard of. Despite us being distant though, your support was steadfast. None of us foresaw the capricious nature of vet school when you watched us being coded almost four years ago, which is why the laughter and hugs you provided when we needed it most sometimes made all the difference. So while the support systems of my fellow graduates and me may all look a little different, I can't emphasize enough how significant each has been in our evolution from pre-vet to vet student to veterinarian. And finally, to the class of 2020, thank you, well, for everything. The word doctor is derived from the Latin word docere, meaning to teach. And if the past 20 or more years of education, crazy hard work, late nights, and obnoxious student debt didn't earn you this befitting title, I would still call you by this name because you have taught me so much. You have taught me how to be a compassionate healer a dedicated teammate, and a good friend. You have shown me what it means to be a mother, a father, and a loving partner. You have served as examples of what it looks like to serve our country, to volunteer your time with disadvantaged communities and populations, and to be the progressive change we want to see within our profession. 
If due to some small fatal administrative oversight, Dr. Fry told me I had to go back and start vet school over again because I never completed the breeds quiz first semester of first year, I don't think I would simply because it wouldn't be as influential or fun without all of you. Each of you has become an above average, good looking, badass doctor. So while I can't foresee or ward off the moments of being overwhelmed, self-doubt or exhaustion that we will all likely face our first year out in practice, I know that all of us eventually will not just survive, but begin to thrive. Class of 2020, congratulations. And again, thank you for everything. Until our paths cross again, I wish you all way more than luck. Hello, DVM class of 2020, and thank you so much for the honor of asking me to spend some time with you during this very special event. I don't have a cap and gown, but I do have my hat, and I have my Feline Club Meow shirt, so I should be all set. I'd like to start by saying I'm sorry. Uh, not to you guys, but to your parents, your significant others, your family, your close friends. You see, I am the father of identical twin high school senior girls. And like you, they've pretty much had the end of their experience destroyed. Now, like you, they are also handling it pretty well. But as their dad, I am devastated. I have waited three and a half years to watch their final high school soccer season, uh, senior night, award ceremonies, banquets, graduation, and yes, prom, them dressed to the nines looking so beautiful, and me giving their dates the like major father stink eye. All of that gone. As a parent, you figure out pretty early on there's really nothing like the pain that you feel for your children. So help them out. Thank them for the tremendous effort they've put out to help you get to where you are now and let them know it's gonna be okay. Next, I'd like to say I'm sorry. Uh, again, not to you guys, but to my colleagues. What, you think we like sitting in our chairs, staring at a computer, interacting with little boxes of faces? No, we actually look forward to spending your fourth year on the clinic floor with you live and in person. And yet our faculty has been asked to transform themselves and transform the way they deliver veterinary medical education these last couple of months. In fact, I believe Dr. Fry gave them about 48 hours to completely revamp the experience you would have on the clinic floor. And I think they've done a tremendous job, just really a staggering effort. Have there been hiccups? Have there been hurdles, bumps? Some things that just plain haven't worked? Yes, of course, but let's face it. You can tell a medicine all you want, and it's about as close to veterinary medicine as kissing your phone because you're FaceTiming with your girlfriend, right? Uh, so these people have turned themselves inside out to try to give you a meaningful experience here at the end of your fourth year. Uh, so let's help them out and give them a big thank you or, or maybe a virtual applause. Okay, finally, I'd like to say I'm sorry to you guys. Uh, first, I'm sorry for not having acknowledged it when it happened, but it still ranks in my mind as one of the most inspiring events of this entire pandemic. It was about a day after DVM students were told they wouldn't be coming back into the building anymore that I came up with the seemingly brilliant idea, well, let's ask them if they wanna volunteer to come back in and help out. And I was absolutely flooded with emails from some third but mostly fourth year veterinary students who wanted to turn around and march right back into this building. Yes, many of them wanted the experience, of course, but all of them wanted to help. Unfortunately, I started running into all sorts of extenuating circumstances that pretty much crushed my vision. 
Uh, and at that time, I should have reached out and acknowledged just how personally impacted I had been uh, by that. Uh, so let me make up for that now. And again, uh, thank you for, for that truly uh, inspiring response. Finally, I'd like to say I'm sorry to you guys because I'm guessing this is probably not what you signed up for. Unless, of course, it is. As veterinarians, we are as qualified as anybody on this planet to understand, to deal with, and to explain all sorts of infectious and zoonotic diseases that can send animals and humans to the hospital or even kill them. And so you will be looked at as the calm, educated voice that explains this stuff. And you will be looked at as an example of the best practices for dealing with, yes, a pandemic. Are you being asked to intubate COVID-19 positive human patients with severe respiratory diseases in a critical care unit? No but you are being asked to step up and alleviate the pain and the suffering and even potentially save the lives of people's pets and their animals. Does this put you at risk? Yes. Is this your job? Yes. Is this job essential? Absolutely. Those pets may mean more than life itself to that client and those animals may very well represent that client's livelihood. As Frodo, that stubby little hobbit from Lord of the Rings, chosen to bear the burden of civilization itself on his shoulders in a quest that would very likely end his life, said, I wish it need not have happened in my time to which the wise old wizard Gandalf said, as do I, and as do all who live to see such times. But it is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And so I would ask you, as doctors of veterinary medicine, be safe, be smart, and be brave. For you are the ones that will help us through this pandemic and will help us be all the better for having gotten through this pandemic as a profession, as a people, and as a planet. And we are thrilled that you will be the ones helping to determine our future. So congratulations and good luck to you. Hello everyone. I um, It's really hard to understand that I could be sitting in the junior lab in a room all by myself with nobody here but me and my friends and find a way to be nervous. But I have done that, so please bear with me. First of all, I wanna say thank you guys so much for letting me be a part of this program, part of this day, part of your lives in the last four years. It, it's overwhelming. <clears throat> um, it makes me emotional, it makes me excited, and I'm so happy to be able to be here. To sit down and write a speech this day and age, what's going on right now is very difficult for me. So what I thought I would do is just kind of tell you stories about my life and what has happened to me in the last in a little bit, just to kind of share some things. And I know when I say this, I speak for not only myself, but I speak for all the faculty here. We are so, so proud of all of you. We are excited for you, not only just for the last four years of your education, but in those last couple of months through all this diversity. The way that you have stepped up, the way that you have continued your learning, the way that you have showed up to rounds, and the way that you have prepared, it's overwhelming to all of us. And I know I speak for all of us that we are so excited for you. We're so proud of you. You have already in your young careers faced these obstacles that seem to get in your way. But you know what I remember back 
And I wish that I could tell you that this would be the only obstacle that you'll ever face in this profession. The only one, but I can honestly say that's probably not going to be the case. My veterinary career did not start out the way that I thought it would, the way that I had envisioned it. I graduated on a Friday morning back in, oh, let's just say a few years ago. And we graduated on Friday morning and I had a job in Gunnison, Colorado, and I remember calling my bosses, and they said, when do you want to start? Do you want to take some time off? And I said, how about that weekend, and I'll start Monday morning. I was so excited to become a veterinarian, so excited to get going, that I finished the graduation, packed up, and I drove to Gunnison, Colorado. I moved into my 8x10 streamlined trailer that I parked in back of a hotel and plugged into the outlets in the hotel and looked up to my water supply, which was a garden hose. And I was so excited to what I had, and I was so excited for this profession. And so my career was really to start. Monday morning, they said, and I called them when I got down there and got everything set up. And I said, what time would you like me there on Monday? And they said, well, why don't you show up about 8 o'clock? And I said, that would be perfect. I will be there at 8 o'clock on Monday morning to start. And so I said, I spent all weekend fixing up my little trailer, driving back and forth to the clinic, practicing so I knew the best route and the route that was the fastest of things. And then Sunday night came and Monday morning. I set my alarm for 4 a.m. so I could get up because I didn't want to be late. I had to get there on time. On my first day of work, I had to get there on time. So I got up at 4 o'clock. By 4.30, I was ready to go. And I said, I've got to go. I've got to go. What happens if I get stuck by a train or something? There isn't any trains in Gunnison, but I thought, what happens if they build one that night or something? So I panicked a little bit, and I left my house at 4.30. And I pulled into the parking lot at 4.40 that morning. And I sat there, and I looked at my watch, and it says 4.40 in the morning. I didn't want to take a nap. I didn't want to move because I didn't want to be late for my first day. I was so excited. And about 8 o'clock, everybody started coming in, just like they said they would. And I remember one of my bosses walks up to me and he says, how long have you been here? And I looked at my watch and I said, no, not very long, just a few minutes. And he said, well, good, come on in. For today, we thought we would just let you hang out at the clinic, walk around, ask questions, and do what you want. But first of all, we want to bring you into the office. So they brought me into the office and they handed me a brand new purple smock. And I looked at that and I said, it's a purple smock and it's brand new. And they said, well, put it on. And I put on my brand new purple smock and I looked down on the collar and it said Dr. Tim Bolt on it. I was overcome with emotion. I had graduated. I had made it. I'm at my first day of work and I have a brand new purple smock with my name on it. And for the rest of the morning, I followed them around and I was so excited to share the knowledge that I had gained in the four years of veterinary school. I kept throwing out these brilliant statements like that there's a microscope, you can look through that and see things. And this is amoxicillin, it's an antibiotic that you can use. And all these things, I was just so anxious to share my knowledge. Finally, Greg looks at me and he said, you know what, why don't you take the vet truck down to the Cumin Cove and get gas? And my mouth dropped open. I was appalled. I lost my wind for a minute. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, why don't you take the uh, pickup, the vet truck, down to the come and go and fill it up with gas. And I said, you don't let me drive the vet truck my first day of work? And he says, absolutely. Be careful. Back it out. Go down to the come and go, fill it up, and come back, and then we'll see what we got. I was overwhelmed. I could not believe, never in my dreams, that I think that I would get to drive the vet truck on my first day of work. And so I did. I took those keys and I went out and I drove it down to the come and go. And as I'm going, I've got the window down and I'm honking and I'm waving. Hey, everybody, I'm the new vet in town. I've got a brand new purple smock with my name on it. And I was so excited. I pulled into the come and go and I filled it up with fuel. And I went into the come and go because it's a law in my head, in my own head, that if you go to a come and go, you've got to go in and get yourself a 44 ounce big bill. So I went into the come and go, and I went back and I got myself a 44 ounce big goat of Coca-Cola and a chocolate blue pie. And I walked up to the counter and Tony is standing there. I could see Tony to this day. She said, oh, you must be the new vet of town. I said, that's right. And I got a brand new purple smock with my name on it, Dr. Tim. And she said, yeah, I see that. It's nice. I said, oh, yeah, it's real nice. And you know what else, Tony? I got to drive the vet truck on my first day of work. She said, that's real nice. I said, oh, yeah, that's real nice. So I went out to the vet truck and I started driving back up Highway 135. And as you get closer to the footage road, the road turned off to the right. And to this day, I don't really know what happened. I can't explain the next things that happened, the obstacles that I was about to face. As I'm driving, I all of a sudden see the lid of my 44 ounce bingo fly and go by my face like this. And behind it was an eruption of 44 ounces 
the Coca-Cola. Because it came up like this and it exploded into an eruption and it sprayed all over my face, my windshield, and my brand new purple smock. I was looking down and I was trying to grab everything and fix it up. And as I was looking around and looking around, I looked up and I was airborne. I had failed to make the 90 degree turn. And I'm screaming in the air like this, no! And my, my vet truck nosedived into a 14 foot ditch. I'm sitting like this at an angle, upside down. I said, oh, it's no problem. I'll put it in the reverse and I'll back out because this can't happen on my first day at work. And I tried, you're not going anywhere when your vet truck is like this. So I got out and I got the ice out of the pockets of my brand new purple spot. And I humbly walked around the next 100 yards back to the clinic. And as I walked up to the clinic, one of the bosses came out and he looked at me and he said, where's the truck? I said, well, he said, you wrecked it, didn't you? I said, yes, sir, I did. I put it in that ditch down there and I spilled a 44 ounce big gulp all over my brand new purple spot. And he started laughing and he said, well, let's go pull it out of the truck. Let's go pull it out of the ditch before the other boss gets here. We jumped in the truck and we went and we pulled that truck out. And as we pulled back into the pickup, back into the parking lot, the other boss walks out. And he looked at me and he said, you got the truck, didn't you? I said, yes, sir, I did. And I looked at the grill of the truck and it was smashed in a little bit. And there was tumbleweeds and poison hemlock stuck in the grill. And he said, just give me the keys and why don't you go inside? Actually, glad you're here. Why don't you go and you and I will get this heifer in and we will look at her. You take some time, look at her, then come tell me what to do with it. And I said, yes, sir. She said, yeah. and he asked me, do you know how to run a hip catch? I said, yes, sir. I do know how. Dr. Gary, he was my teacher and he showed me how and he did a real fine job. So we brought that heifer in and she's crazy. She's jumping up and down and she's lunging at the head cat. She's lunging and jumping up and down. And he said, just do a physical honor, get your differentials in mind. I'll come and check on you in about five or ten minutes. So I looked at that heifer. Every time I got close to her to listen to her, she threw a fit and jumped down the blue diarrhea everywhere. She's falling down and jumping up and trying to do things that everything is one big blur. Everything is one big jumping obstacle. And he comes out and he said, what'd you find? And I said, well... Not a whole lot, but I, I think that she might be something wrong with her. And he said, that's brilliant. That's really good. I said, why don't you just take her back, put her back in the pan, and we'll work on her in a little bit. Can you do that for me? Just go in reverse of back, exactly what we did. Open the hit catch, let her back out, put her in the pan, and we'll work on her this afternoon. Can you do that? I said, absolutely, I can do that. So you know how to work that hit catch? I said, yes, sir, I do know how to work that hit catch. Dr. Gary should do that. He said, okay, and he left. I walked out in front of the head catch and I pulled the handle like this, just like I had here so many times in the livestock barn. I pulled the handle and within a second, I realized this shoot was backwards from the ones that I was learning on. When I pulled the handle, the front gate opens up this way and this heifer, a wild maniac thing is jumping up and down because I pulled that lever. The head catch flew open this way and I grabbed my hand on her forehead and I'm pushing and I'm screaming, no, go back, go back. And I'm pushing as hard as I can as she lunges forward like this and her head hits me right in the chest. Full tilt hits me in the chest and knocks me flat on my back like this. I'm laying on the back and I'm watching this animal trample over the top of me and in my own weird mind as she goes over the top of me I look up and I look at her udder and I say well her udder's not a problem that looks fine and I think to myself there's no way I'm going to let this heifer get away from me not on my first day of work there's no way she runs over the top of me I reach up like this and I grab a hold of her tail slimy as it may be I grab her tail and I'm yelling no stop and she's running around in the back room which is just a garage with a shoot in it and she's bashing me against the wall. She's blowing diarrhea everywhere. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. And I'm holding onto this tail, and I will not let go. And Greg, he hears the commotion, and he opens the door that connects the large animal room to the small animal room. What do you think a crazy heifer does when he sees an open door? That's why she beelines for the open door, almost takes him out. And what words out of my mouth to this day still puzzle me. As I'm holding on to this tail, this heifer dragging behind her as she goes and runs by Greg and through that open door, I turn my head to the side like this and I yell out to Greg, pay no attention to the man holding on to the heifer's tail. And she runs into the small animal clinic as I hold on. She takes a hard turn to the left to avoid the pharmacy and peels me off on the wall. I lay there in a crumpled 
a mess with poop all over my face, all over my body. And I'm laying there on the side. They never ran through the revolving door into the reception room where a rancher saw her coming in, opened the door and let her go out. And she was last seen running up Highway 135. I lay there on the floor and Debbie, our receptionist, comes and she looks down at me and she said, I don't even know who you are, but I think you working here is going to bring a whole new future to this clinic. And by the way, you are so dead. And she walked away. Greg came up to me and he looks over me. And my two bosses looked at me and they said, are you all right? I said, yes, sir. Except I got my poop all over my brand new purple smock. And they said, why don't you uh, pick yourself up and call it a day too? My first day of work. My very first day of work, the, the, the fantasizing that I had, the obstacles that I had to uh, go around that day were incredible. So I want to leave you with that is no matter what obstacles get in the way, continue to go. The last thing I want to talk to you about is a short story about even it's going to happen to you even within the next couple weeks, next month, maybe next two or three years. Always push yourself. You have so many colleagues out here that you can contact. You can call us. Always push yourself. Continue your education. Don't ever let yourself get stagnant. Look at new things. Push the envelope of learning. Me and Jim and Greg are standing in the clinic one morning discussing that. Hey, we've hit the point in our careers where we need to look and better ourselves. We need to do, do things that are different. We need to look at different things. And about that time, Debbie walks through that same revolving door and she goes, hey, you guys, there's a lady out here named Melinda that would like one of you to look at her turtle. And so I turned around to look at Jim and Greg and they were gone. I was going to ask them if they wanted to look at the turtle, but they were gone. One of the things I will tell you, an educational thing I have to share with you, if the, your bosses do not want to do something, they will be gone like magic. And I said, you know what? This is exactly what we were talking about. Push the envelope. Let me do something different. I can do this. Besides that, Debbie, I know a little bit about turtles because I used to go to Kansas and pick them up off the road. The little guys with yellow marks on their shell, take them home and have them. Sometimes they would even live a month for me. No, yes, I can look at this turtle. I'm going to push the envelope. Put them in the room, Debbie. And so she puts them in the room. And I open the door to the examiner when I walk in there. No exaggeration to this. I look down at the table, and here is a turtle on the table that is this big around. It's not a turtle with a little tiny turtle with yellow markings on its back. It's just a big big around. It's out of Jurassic Park. Its shell is all gadget like this. Its tail is sticking out. It's got spikes on it. Its head is out like this. It looks like a raptor. It's going blah, 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 like that. And I said to her, I said, Belinda, this is the biggest turtle I have ever seen in my life. And she looks at me and she says, oh, Dr. Holt, Spikey is not a turtle. He is a tortoise. And I looked down at him and I said, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, turtles, tortoise, or whatever. This is the biggest turtle, tortoise I have ever seen in my life. I said, what happened? What is wrong with Spikey today? And she said, Spikey hasn't pooped in over two and a half weeks and now he doesn't want to eat anymore. And I said, oh, that's bad. And I was thinking to myself, you don't poop in two and a half weeks. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. That can't be good. So I'm looking at it and I'm petting his little shell like this. And I get out my stethoscope and I listen to his shell and I'm moving around like that. And I take his little pulse like this and I do a little percussion on his shell and I take it off. I put it back. I'm trying to think, what in the world am I going to do with this turtle who hasn't pooped in two and a half weeks? And she said, you know what? You're the first veterinarian that's ever listened to my turtle's heart. I said, oh yeah, I just enjoy hearts. Yeah, it's no problem. And then it hit me. He hasn't pooped in two and a half weeks. I got a constipated turtle here. That's all it is. I got a constipated turtle. I said, Melinda, he's constipated. I'm going to put a glove on and do a rectal exam on him. Maybe there's a poop ball stuck and I can pull the poop ball out and we'll pass Mikey back to normal in a day. She said, okay. So I put a little glove on and I lift his little channel like this and I start to do a rectal and I'm kind of working it in like this and I'm going in, going in. And I get in just about where I want to and I'm trying to feel around. And about that time, Spikey decides he doesn't like that so much. And his shell begins to clamp down on me like this. And he crushes my finger a little bit. And it's no big deal. I'm going, yeah, yeah, he's just pushing. He's just kind of playing around with me. And I try to pull my finger out. And the more I pull, the harder he claps. 
And now it's beginning to hurt. And I look down at my finger and his shell is actually crushing my finger. So now I'm getting a little panicky. I'm beginning to sweat because it's beginning to hurt. And I begin to slide spiky like this across the table. I hold on to him and I pull like this, but my finger is stuck. I can't get it out. It's stuck in his butt. And I'm thinking to myself, my finger's stuck in this turtle's butt. And I don't know what to do about it. The harder I pull, the more he crutches me. And he's crutching hard now, and I'm sliding him more and more. I even try to bang him a little bit. No give. It finally dawns on to me. I'm going to hold his nostrils off. If I hold his nostrils off, when he can't breathe, he'll open up his shell, and I'll pull my finger out. And I hold on his nostrils, and I'm stuck like this. And then I'm watching him, and about the time I think it's working, his head retracts like this and lunges forward. It lunges forward and bites my finger. He's now got my index finger in his mouth. He's not letting go. He doesn't bite like that. He bites it and begins to crush my finger. I am now stuck like this in a, in a finger trap. I have one finger in his butt, one finger in his mouth. What is dripping from this finger and I cannot get out? I'm thinking, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a turtle. I am bouncing him like this. And I'm thinking, maybe if I create vertigo, he'll vomit or get diarrhea and my fingers will be free. And so I'm taking him and I'm spinning him like this and I'm working him and I set him down and I bang and I said hey we need to turn around and look at that calendar back there at the basket house and I'm starting to sweat pretty hard my knees are shaking in pain and Melinda turns around and I bang spiky on the table like this trying to get my fingers out she turns back around and I said you know Melinda I've kind of got spiky right where I want him but I don't want to let go of him can you uh, open that door for me so I can walk out and uh, examine him further uh, there and she says yes and she goes to the door and I'm still stuck and I'm still pulling as hard as I can to get out and nothing's happening I walk out I walk out into the uh, area our treatment area and my bosses are standing there and they said what are you doing and I said I'm stuck in this turtle I just got one, one finger in his butt one finger in his mouth and he's got me and he won't let go can you fill up the batch up we're going to put this thing underwater and I went in and I took Spikey little did I know Melinda was following me out and the bathtub came up, and I switched Spikey in there, and my eyes are closed, and I'm trying not to pass out. And I feel the water go around my hands, and pretty soon I feel it. And I hear Melinda. I can feel his softening, and my fingers are starting to slide out of his mouth. He lets go of my finger in the mouth, and finally, my finger fell out of his butt. And I hear Melinda jumping up and down and grabbing me and hugging me. She said, oh, Dr. Holt, you are the greatest veterinarian ever. I'm going to make you my turtle doctor and tortoise doctor forever from this day on. <clears throat> I had no idea what she was talking about. When I opened my eyes, I looked down. And Spikey was sitting on a pile of poop that was this big. Apparently, the warm water and or my finger, one of them relieved the poop plug. And he was sitting on that pile of poop like it was a little island. And he was better. The moral of the story is push yourself. Look for new things to do. Keep yourself motivated. I am so proud of all of you. Do I wish that I could be standing in front of you <clears throat> to look out and see your eyes and your excitement and to be able to look out and see your families and give your grandmothers a hug? Absolutely. But things didn't turn out that way. But it doesn't matter. I love all of you. Thank you so much for there having me here today. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Thank you. Greetings, doctors of the class of 2020. Welcome to your award ceremony. For those who don't know me, my name is Melinda Fry, and I am so pleased to serve as the Associate Dean for Veterinary, Academic, and Student Affairs here at Colorado State University. You know, as I was preparing for this recording, it just seems so lonely without all of you, without our faculty colleagues and college leadership, so on the premise that one can never have too many senior deans at an academic celebration, and in an attempt to add some solemnity to this online occasion, I invited two of my COVID-resistant dean friends to join me today. Please welcome Mr. James Dean and Mr. Dean Martin. You gentlemen ready to move forward? Great. They are very excited to be here today. On with the awards ceremony. We are one of the top programs in the country, primarily due to our exceptionally talented and dedicated faculty members who work very hard 
to ensure that our students have the mentorship and the education to optimally prepare them for success after graduation. I'm honored to start the awards ceremony by recognizing three faculty awardees, presented in this venue because the recipients were cho chosen partly or wholly by the class of 2020. Each year, the Zoetis Distinguished Veterinary Teaching Award is given to a faculty member nominated by the DVM students for excellence in teaching. The 2020 recipient of this very prestigious award is Dr. Forgivmore Magunda. Congratulations, Dr. Magunda. <laughs> Student members of the American Association of Equine Practitioners recognize an outstanding equine practitioner. The recipient of the 2020 AAEP Teaching Award is Dr. Luke Bass. Congratulations, Dr. Bass. Student members of the American Association of Bovine Practitioners recognize an outstanding livestock instructor. The recipient of the 2020 Pearson Jensen Food Animal Excellence in Teaching Award is Dr. Tanya Applegate. Congratulations, Dr. Applegate. And now we'll move on to the Student Awards or the New Doctor Awards. The student chapter of the American Veterinary Medical Association sponsors an annual award that recognizes an outstanding fourth year student. The recipient of the 2020 SAVMA Outstanding Senior Award goes to Dr. Emily Hill. Congratulations, Dr. Hill. Merck and the American Veterinary Medical Foundation recognize an outstanding graduate who demonstrates innovation and creativity, leading to impactful change. The 2020 Innovation Award goes to Dr. L. Holbrook. Congratulations, Dr. Holbrook. The American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine awards a certificate of clinical excellence to senior students who have demonstrated outstanding didactic and clinical expertise in internal medicine. The three recipients of the 2020 ACVIM Certificate of Clinical Excellence include Dr. Nicole Del Pino for excellence in large animal internal medicine. Dr. Shannon Liu for Excellence in Small Animal Internal Medicine, and Dr. Kevin Sampson for Excellence in Small Animal Internal Medicine. Congratulations to all three of you. The Professional Excellence Award is given to senior students who have demonstrated excellent customer service, outstanding teamwork, professionalism, and positivity, thereby serving as exceptional role models for us all. The recipients of the 2020 Professional Excellence Award are Dr. Lindsay Haynow, Dr. Claire Tovre, Dr. Robert Bunce, Dr. Marta Karn, and Dr. Amanda Gayshock. Congratulations to each of you. That ends my portion of the awards ceremony. Please stay tuned for more. So I wish to sign off. The, the photo on the left is just wishing you well in an appropriately biosecure way. Congratulations to each of you, and I, I sincerely thank you for all that you have contributed as individuals to our program and for your perseverance and dedication through this pandemic. I'm so grateful that I have gotten to know so many of you. Experiences from this time will shape your personal and your professional life. I know that you will contribute to our profession in unique and powerful ways. And please remember that even very positive, exciting, happy transitions can be very stressful. So please be very good to yourselves over the next several months. May you each experience joy, peace, love, and success 
as you embark on your new adventures. Goodbye. Hi everybody, my name is Kashid Mama. I'm one of the anesthesia faculty at CSU, and it's my distinct pleasure to present the Anesthesia Awards on behalf of the anesthesia team. Both recipients for this award exhibited excellence on both the small and large animal sides of the hospital. The first recipient is Shelley Sullivan. Shelley was focused on wanting to do the best for her patients while also supporting her classmates and helping staff and faculty facilitate the caseload through the day. Faculty and staff appreciated her intelligence, work ethic, calm demeanor, and humble nature. The second awardee is Danielle Adney. Faculty and staff were impressed with Danielle's maturity and professionalism and found her consistently well prepared to provide the best possible care for her patients. Danielle was also particularly good at using humor to improve the spirit and camaraderie among her classmates. Both students have future positions lined up and we wish them the very best as they move on to the next phase of their career. Congratulations to you both. Wishing you the very best. We are Dr. Sue Vanderwood and Dr. Edward Hoover. We are the co-directors of the Colorado State University DVM PhD program. First of all, congratulations class of 2020 for getting through this tumultuous time. You did a great job. And you're gonna be amazing when you get out there and practice. Each year we admit one to three students to a program that is very difficult. It's demanding because not only these students complete the four-year DVM degree, but they are engaged in a PhD program, which after an additional three to four years results in uh, the culmination of both degrees. Um, and we are pleased to present the award tonight to students who completed the program this year. And it was seven years ago we recruited Chloe Stenkamp Strom to the program. And today we're here to congratulate her on completing both degrees and completing thereby a program in which she is trained to think like both a veterinarian and a scientist. So Chloe, congratulations. We loved every minute of you and the program and uh, we know you'll do well. We sure wish you well. Congratulations. Yeah, we're sorry. Good luck. We brought him, though. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Lynn Griffin. I'm a veterinary radiologist at the Colorado State University Veterinary Teaching Hospital. It is my distinct pleasure to be able to present the American College of Veterinary Radiology Award to Dr. Kira Stokowski. Dr. Stokowski is an amazingly intelligent and dedicated individual who is adamant in her desire to become a veterinary radiologist. I've had the pleasure of working with her as a co-author on a paper where she demonstrated her organizational skills and perseverance. My only regret is that as she moves forward in her career, I won't be able to be more of a mentor to her, but I am confident that she will do us all proud as she works towards her professional goals. Dr. Stukowski, I look forward to many years ahead with you as a professional colleague and a fellow radiologist. Congratulations. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Lappin, one of the internal medicine professors here at Colorado State University. First, I wanted to congratulate the students and their families for a job well done and wish you great luck for the future. Today, I'd like to present the award for the senior veterinary student that has shown great proficiency in feline medicine and surgery. As we all know, this is a special creature of the cat, and we have a parent organization called the AAFP that does many great things like teach people how to appropriately use vaccines, provide senior care to be a cat-friendly hospital, and I've got to admit I'm a homer, but I believe that we've had the best chapter from the student group of any of the different organizations uh, in the country. But for this year, this award, very well deserved goes to our soon to be Dr. Laurel Krause. Laurel, congratulations. Thanks so much for all you did for cats while you were here and congratulations and good luck for the future. Virtual applause for soon to be Dr. Krause. 
Another hat that I wear here at Colorado State is the director of the Center for Companion Animal Studies. This is a clinical research group that I started about 13 years ago. The professorship that I'm named for, Kenneth W. Smith professorship, was a family of medical doctors and DVMs that were quite interested in advancing the science with clinical research. One of the things that we do in the center is provide clinical research dollars to help people get their projects done. This particular program is for clinical studies and they have to involve a veterinary student. This particular award, which we instituted several years ago, is to go to students that show great proficiency in clinical research studies over the course of their career here at the Veterinary Teaching Hospital. This year, I'm very proud and happy to give the award to Dr. Michelle Sullivan. Shelley, thank you so much for what you've done uh, while you were here helping save animals via your research and also for helping be a reviewer of the center grants over the course of your career here as well. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Congratulations to all of you. I'm so excited for you guys to finally be here because I know the last six to eight weeks wasn't exactly how you pictured finishing up your vet school career. But regardless, you did it, you made it, and welcome to the profession. I'm here to today present a couple of awards, starting with the American College Student Surgical Proficiency Award on the small animal side. The large animal recipient will be named here shortly. And this award is given to a fourth year student who has demonstrated clinical and academic proficiency in small animal surgery, as well as a strong interest and love for this particular specialty. It is my privilege on behalf of the entire small animal surgery section to name this year's 2020 recipient of the Small Animal ACBS Award as Dr. Miguel Hernandez. Congratulations. The second award goes to two students, and this is the, a very special award called the Gentle Doctor. The award is actually going to be a statuette given to two students that is a replica of the statue that stands in front of the small animal hospital at Iowa State University. This statue was created in the mid 1930s as a reflection of the concern, affection, love, and the significance of all creatures that veterinarians care for. The statue has been described as heroic as it stands over seven feet tall and the hands and feet are overemphasized. The artist acknowledged that he felt that veterinarians pretty much spend all day on their feet, but also it is our hands that are our most important tool for caring for these amazing creatures. The puppy that the veterinarian holds is also meant as a reflection of the very strong bond between people and animals. So it's this award, it reflects this inspiration to, and it goes to two students at almost every veterinary school, but those students here at CSU who reflect that knowledge, competency to be a veterinarian, but also exhibit an extraordinary compassion. And that is reflected by their gentle manner and their special abilities in dealing what, with not only our patients, but to our clients as well. This year, the large animal recipient is Dr. Paige Johnson. And the small animal recipient is Dr. Melissa Sandate. I think you will agree that these two individuals truly exemplify this award. Congratulations. And with that, I'll pass it on. But again, my sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. Greetings, class of 2020. Congratulations on this incredible accomplishment in this very strange year. I wish you all the best and best of health as you travel around the country and around the world in the next phases of your career. Right now, it's my pleasure to award the Veterinary Emergency and Critical Care Society's Award for Proficiency in Emergency and Critical Care Medicine. 
This award goes to a fourth year student who's shown a special interest and aptitude and ability in the field of critical care and emergency medicine. This year's recipient is Dr. Taylor Curley, almost said Taylor Swift. Dr. Curley has been a huge part of emergency and critical care as a student hourly, a volunteer, and during her student rotations, and her leadership in the Veterinary Emergency and Critical Care Society's student chapter. Taylor, we really appreciated all the efforts you've put forward to this. You've done a, just an amazing job uh, these past four years, and in this past year especially. We're going to miss you, and we're going to wish you the best. Uh, if you choose uh, another specialty along the way, we won't hold that against you. But I look forward to uh, having you join us as a colleague in emergency and critical care medicine. All the best in your internship, and please stay in touch. Thanks. Hi, class of 2020. Congratulations, everybody. I'm very sorry that I couldn't be speaking to you in person today, but on behalf of all of the faculty in the critical care unit, I am here to present the Excellence in Critical Care Award. And this is awarded to a fourth year student who demonstrates excellent knowledge, initiative, client communication, and clinical skills in the critical care unit. So without further delay, I am very excited to present the Excellence in Critical Care Award to James Damone. I had the pleasure of working with James while he was on his critical care rotation, and James managed a beautiful dog named Star, and Star was truly an amazing patient, a very gentle soul, but she was septic and she suffered just about every complication of sepsis. James was incredibly engaged with Star. He showed up every day with a smile on his face, even though I know he was here late every night trying to get her stabilized before he went home. He took the initiative in making treatment decisions and he was prepared to tackle every complication that Star faced. James also visited and communicated with Star's family every day. He was kind and compassionate in an incredibly difficult situation. James, you truly exemplify what it means to be a veterinarian. Congratulations on this well-deserved award. Thank you for your commitment to STAR and to the critical care unit. Hey, Elle, it's Dr. Kelly Hall here. I am speaking on behalf of Dr. Kavanaugh, who's out on maternity leave, and wanted to congratulate you on the Urgent Care Award. Uh, when we were discussing this award, I know your name came immediately and very quickly to Dr. Kavanaugh. Um, so congratulations to you on earning the recognition and attention uh, for your exceptional work in the urgent care room on during your rotation. Um, while I don't I didn't have the chance to actually work with you while you were on urgent care. I do very much fondly remember getting to interact with you during the COHA conference a couple of years ago, and I was so impressed with how well-spoken, organized, and uh, leadership skills that you have. So I wish you the best of luck on the next phase of your journey, and congratulations on behalf of the critical care faculty for this urgent care award. Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Katie Simpson. I'm one of the livestock medicine and surgery faculty, and it is very much my pleasure to get to present the livestock specific awards for our senior students this year. Um, the first award that I get to present is the Livestock Medicine and Surgery Clinical Proficiency Award. And this is awarded to a senior student who demonstrates exceptional knowledge and proficiency in medical and surgical care of livestock patients, and the recipient receives an award certificate. This year, we had two fantastic recipients of this award, and I'd like to say very heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Andy Harding and Dr. Elena Cohen. The next award is the Dairy Field Service Clinical Proficiency Award. And this is awarded to a senior student who demonstrates exceptional knowledge and proficiency in dairy field and production medicine. And the recipient also receives an award certificate. Again, a very heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Erica Sebastian. 
Our next award is the Beef Clinical Proficiency Award. And this is awarded to a senior student that demonstrates exceptional knowledge and proficiency in beef cattle management and production medicine. The recipient receives an award certificate. Congratulations, Dr. Brian McDonald. And our final livestock specific award is the American Association of Small Ruminant Practitioners Award. This is awarded to a senior student that shows clinical proficiency in small ruminant medicine, including sheep, goats, llamas, and alpacas, and is chosen by the clinical faculty that are members of the AASRP. The recipient receives a $200 award and a certificate. Congratulations, Dr. Heather Davis. And to the entire class of 2020, I'd like to say, um, it has been such an honor for us to get to be a part of your clinical education, um, both in the clinic and online. Words really can't describe how much we have missed you guys in the clinic, and yet you guys have been um, amazingly resilient. Um, you've kept a sense of humor. You stayed engaged in your own education. Um, and you guys are going to do such amazing things in the future. Um, we are so proud of you and we are, we are so fortunate to have gotten to work with you guys. And we wish you all the very, very best. You're going to make a wonderful, wonderful group of veterinarians. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. It's so great to celebrate you in this momentous occasion. Unfortunately, we're doing it all remotely like we've been doing for the last few weeks. We really miss you guys and we're excited for your futures. It's my pleasure to announce the Equine Awards. And to begin with, I'm going to announce the Equine Services Clinical Proficiency Awards. These awards are awarded to the fourth year DVM student for outstanding clinical performance in the field of equine services. The first award is the Equine Reproduction recipient, and that's Hannah McGranahan Thompson. Congratulations, Hannah. The Surgical Service recipient is Carissa Brandt. Congratulations, Carissa. The medical service recipient is Mallory Lehman. Congratulations, Mallory. The ambulatory service recipient is Zane Gucker. Good job, Zane. The emergency service recipient, Noreen O'Neillis Walsh. And the sports rehabilitation, Libby Homer and Emmy Yogi. So good job, everyone, on your awards for the Equine Services Clinical Proficiency Awards. The next award is the American College of Veterinary Surgeons Student Award. And this is awarded to the fourth year student who has demonstrated academic and clinical proficiency in large animal surgery and aptitude and interest in large animal surgery. And the winner of this award is Kate Alexander. Well done, everyone. It's a pleasure to have been spending the last four years with you. Can't wait to see how you do in the future. Thanks. Hi, class of 2020. It's ophthalmology. We're just here saying congratulations on graduation. You're going to do awesome. We've so enjoyed working with you and getting to know all of you. And we're here for you if you ever need us. Yay, congratulations. And we also have a, the ophthalmology award. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and this year award, it was really hard to find because the one who's going to get it because you guys are just so amazing. But the student who got the ophthalmology award this year, she has been really, really into ophthalmology since she started vet school. And she's done a great job. And congratulations to Kyle, Kyle Klein. Klein. Yay, Kyle, and congratulations. Yes, congratulations. And we have a little bit of a gift for you and we will send it to you. And it's a pink, Ooh, hold on. Wait for it, wait Ooh. for it. Look. Flashy. Hey. So, congratulations, but again, congratulations to all Everyone. of you. You are amazing and miss you a lot. Miss you guys. Best of luck. Bye. Bye. I'm Jennifer Schisler with Dermatology, and I'm pleased to present the Excellence in Dermatology Award. And this award is given to a fourth year student who demonstrates excellent knowledge initiative, client communication, and clinical skills in dermatology. And this year's recipient is Mandy Takaguchi. 
and we've been pleased to work with Mandy for the last few years. As a student and a volunteer, she's helped us with our clients and our patients. She's even helped us with resident research projects. She's shown a great degree of aptitude for dermatology and client communication skills and she has a goal of becoming a dermatologist and we believe very strongly that she is going to uh, fulfill that goal and do an excellent job of it. So we've really enjoyed working with you, Mandy. We're sorry that we couldn't finish out the year with you. Um, we wanna say hi from Colorado. We wanna let you know that we're proud of you and that we are looking forward to speaking with you again and hearing how your internship is going. Good job, Mandy. It's my honor to present the Bayer Excellence in Communication Award that recognizes a student for displaying strength in the 20 communication skills. I'm so proud to present this award this year to Zane Gauker. Hi everybody, welcome and congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. It's so exciting and so sad that we're not gonna be able to play together in person, but I am so proud of each and every one of you. I have the honor of presenting the American Animal Hospital Association's Primary Care Award. This is awarded to a fourth year student who shows clinical proficiency in primary care. As always, we have so many people that this award could have gone to. However, we've chosen Bailey Richards. Congratulations. It's my honor to present the Sophie Relationship Center Care Award. This award is presented to students who demonstrate strong communication skills ability in building client relationships, and recognizing the human bond. This year we have four student awardees. They are Garrett Carica, Lou Ballou, Jenny Klecka, and Amy Downey. Congratulations to you all. Hi graduates, welcome to your virtual hooding for the class of 2020. My name is Sue Lana, and I'm one of the medical oncologists here at the um, BTH. I'm here to present two awards today. The first is the Veterinary Cancer Society Bob Rosenthal Oncology Student Award. This award is given to one student selected from each veterinary school across the country. This student must demonstrate outstanding dedication and commitment to the field of veterinary oncology. This year's recipient is Elena Kuzmik. The next award is the Ringen Family Award in honor of Dr. Kim Ringen. Kim received her DVM degree from CSU in 2006. As a vet student and then intern at Kansas State, she developed a love for oncology. She completed her oncology residency at the University of Missouri in 2010 and got her dream job at a specialty practice in Denver. Three years later, at the age of 39, Kim was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. She fought a four-year battle with grace and dignity until her death in May of 2017. Kim was the most vibrant person that could light up a room with her infectious smile and her flaming red hair. She used to say that um, her hair helped her channel her inner golden retriever. Her husband, Davin, and family set up this award for a recipient who demonstrates proficient clinical skills and extraordinary professional rapport with clients all while upholding a patient's dignity by providing compassionate cancer care. This year's recipient is Emily Janik. Hi, my name is Naomi Hoyer, and I am excited to present the Dentistry Clinical Service Award to an outstanding fourth year who showed interest and excitement about being in dentistry in their clinical rotations. We selected our winner this year because not only did she do the in-person dentistry rotation, she then also elected to do the online dentistry rotation with us. So she just couldn't get enough of dentistry and we couldn't get enough of her. Our winner this year is Tanya Anderson. It was so wonderful to have you with us. Our award this year is sponsored by Dental Air. So not only does Tanya get a nifty piece of paper, but she gets her very own extraction pack that she can take with her into her general practice. Good luck, everyone. We miss you so much.
Congratulations to all of our graduates here today and to your families. It's a wonderful moment to enjoy, to reflect on all of your accomplishments and to look with hope to the future, to future accomplishments, triumphs and successes. I'm Rick Miranda, Provost here at Colorado State, and as such, I lead the Division of Academic Affairs, all the faculty, the academic departments, the colleges, etc. I am continually amazed day after day, year after year, not only at the disciplinary accomplishments of our faculty, but also at their humanity, their humility, and their desire to make a difference, and their genuine concern for you, our students. Let me speak for our faculty when I report that we are greatly honored to have worked with you these years. Indeed, you give us the best opportunities to make a difference in our careers. I trust that you have felt that too, and that your years here at CSU will have set you on a path that will make us all proud. You now finally, we're in the education business here, and I want to close with the pitch. Pay that education forward. Insist on quality and work to improve education at all levels, in your own family, in your local community schools, and in our state universities. We look forward to your future and your support. And with your and others' help, students for many generations to come will be preparing for accomplishments and success here at Colorado State University. Thank you. Hello, Colorado State University class of 2020. Congratulations, you did it. I know today isn't quite how any of us pictured this big moment, but the fact that we're here today celebrating your achievements is a tribute to the resilience of the entire RAM community. All of you who suddenly found yourselves finishing up years of hard work in a new virtual environment. Faculty who also had to make that swift transition to assure you'd make it to the finish line with the education you'd been promised. And now all of your families and friends who are joining us for this virtual celebration. I wish we could all be here on campus together to celebrate, especially because the trees on the Oval are beginning to flourish at this time of year. I miss being on the Oval every day. It's made me realize that our CSU community, like our beautiful green campus, is a kind of ecosystem in which we all depend on one another. The challenges of these past months may have kept us physically apart, yet facing them has bound us more closely together. There's a kind of fragility inherent in that interdependence, and it impacts even wonderful moments like celebrating your graduation from CSU. It feels strange not to be physically with all of you, not to be able to shake hands, high five, or hug. And I know you feel that way about the friends who have made this journey with you and the faculty and staff mentors who've made it possible. But over the last few months, I have also seen this community and all of you in particular exhibit an incredible strength and resiliency that generations have shared and experienced in difficult times. Times of war, times of economic upheaval, and yes, times of pandemic. That resiliency is rooted in our land grant mission. As a university, Colorado State was born in a time of crisis and founded on a revolutionary commitment to access, to generating knowledge, and to use it to meet the world's biggest and most complex challenges. All of you inherit that legacy of resilience and will carry it forward. The class of 2020 is one for the history books and an example for future generations. I can't wait to see where your journeys take you and how you will use your CSU education to change our world for the better. As your president, I am incredibly proud of all of you. Let's celebrate this unforgettable moment physically separated, yet truly together. So as we close, I'd like to, to share a couple words with you. If you follow your heart, you will love what you do. 
if you love what you do, you will always be involved with lifelong learning. If you love what you do, you will have no regrets. If you love what you do, your time will never be wasted. And if you love what you do, you will make a difference. And I know that each and every one of you will make a difference. Congratulations, class of 2020. Well done. Hi, doctors. Uh, I'm gonna keep my sign off message pretty short as I'm saving the real tearjerker for the ceremony in December. I just want all of you to know how proud I am to have been part of the CSU DVM class of 2020. Our class has been through so much over the last four years um, and especially over the last few months with all the unexpected circumstances. Um, but I'm so happy to say that we made it. Um, I've really enjoyed being our class president over the last few years. I feel like this role has definitely allowed me to get to know you all a lot better. Um, and I'm really happy to be able to call you my friends and my colleagues. Um, so thank you for always being there for one another and for helping me advocate for us. Um, I'm really excited to see a lot of you in December and see what new lives you've all started. Uh, I also don't want to get sappy, but I do want um, all of you to know that I'm here for each and every one of you. Whether you want to laugh, cry, reminisce, complain, um, I'll be that person that will listen. So thank you again for helping get all of us through the last four years and the biggest congratulations to all of you. We did it. I uh, hope you all get the chance to celebrate big today because you all deserve it. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.